If you're only here to cause drama, come sit next to me. If you're looking for the bare necessities, you found them. Hello! I'm Hunter Harden. And I'm Papa the Bear. And, and welcome, welcome to the Real House Bears. And so then I asked him, are you in love with this other podcast? <laughs> because if you are, then divorce me and go be with that other podcast. <laughs> I am oddly not surprised by that because you were really fascinated by that when we were watching it. Then divorce me. Yes. Then I mean, divorce me. That was like some daytime soap uh, opera. Yeah, like delivery. Whether it is true or not, it almost doesn't even matter at this point. Bad acting, for sure. <laughs> but the thing it was, it was her, though. I mean, that's just how she speaks sometimes. She's just so... I've never heard it like that. <laughs> not like that. Like, she turned into, like, a drag queen impersonating, like... Mommy Dearest or yes, something. Yes, you're like, right, you're don't right. Don't F with me, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Erica deserves to be as nasty as she wants with all the pressure on her, according to her. And honestly, I'd have a lot of rage, too, if I lost all my money. I mean, she does have a lot of pressure on her. And Actually, I do want to talk it. about it a little bit when we get to it. Because, you know, well, first of all, it's our... Beverly Hills reunion extravaganza. Yeah, we threw it all into one episode. Bottom up, ladies. Yes, yeah, so we are recapping all four reunion episodes. And we're not going to, like, dig in deep. Because, for one, everyone's already seen all the episodes. Yeah, and yeah. And two, we've already covered all this, mostly. But I do feel like it was worth having four episodes. Like, it never had downtime, really. And, you know, this is a pretty large cast. There's a lot of women on this cast. More Like, you know, New York only had five. Um, Salt Lake City this season has seven, but last season only had six. Um, Orange County only has five. So this mm. is a pretty large cast. So they each got their own little package, yeah. you know. And then Erica Jane had, like, three packages that were themed. That like, were Erica's out, divorce, yeah. Erica's yeah. legal problems, Erica's problems with the cast, I guess, was the third. And, well, and how, I mean, just how she's being put in... Like out her, like put herself out in public. I have nothing to hide. So I was a little nervous that I, I was going to be that I w was going to find it tedious just talking about Erica for four episodes. But I felt like they stretched it out, and it really reminded me the value that Crystal brought to the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, she kind of disappeared in the second half she of the did. season, but she. I mean, the first half of the season was all about Crystal and Sutton. Yeah. And of course, Sutton kept herself placed throughout the entire the season. The entire season. Poor Sutton. I am Team Sutton now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love her. Like, yeah. I hated her at first. I mean, even at the beginning of the season. You know what I You know what I softened to Sutton is when she wore that outfit with the white blouse and the big black bow. Mm -hmm. I just understood that outfit for some reason, and it made me just, for some reason, understand Sutton. Ridiculous, crazy, paranoid, and irrational, and too sensitive. I've got it. Huh. Is that weird? Kind of. Yeah, it is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And one thing that was weird, though, is starting off the reunion, the first episode, at Erica's house with her and Lisa Rinna. Yeah, this weird intro with Lisa and Erica, like, foreshadowing the event. It's... I thought it was... Forced? It felt almost scripted. Yeah, and it just seemed like... We are everyone. Else, everyone was already waiting for all that. Whatever they were saying, like everyone's already waiting for that to happen. And really, all that it was was just a moment to confirm that Erica was going to be there, mm -hmm. that she's not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. And she's going to be as open as she can be. We'll see. I mean, she, I. It's, at, nah, we'll get into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get into some of the fashion. Kyle's dress. Like, I just can't go any further and not talk about Kyle's dress. Did you not like it? Oh, my God. It was horrible. <laughs> that keyhole in her cleavage didn't... I mean, she's got such a perfect body, but mm -hmm. that made her breast look weird. It made them look long. It made them look squished. Oh, yeah. I mean, that dress can only work for a woman who has either no breasts or giant breasts. If you're anywhere in between, I, it's just not flattering, and I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. I was distracted by it every time I showed her. 
You know, I was actually mad about it. You just don't lose your temper. You know what I was distracted by this whole time, and I realized it was because of the fashion, was Erica Jane's right arm was just placed by her side so dead-like. And, like, so uncomfortable-like. And I think it's because when she had her arm bent, the fabric was pinching into her elbows and cutting off her circulation to her hands. Oh, no. So I think she had her arm down on her right... Like, if you go back and watch it... it I'm so Throughout glad the whole thing, it's that. like dead. I'm so glad you didn't tell me that. And it distracted me because her left arm was bent on the thing, so that was fine. So I guess it was just the main... I don't know. It looked like she gained... Maybe a little oh bit LB God. since she got it fitted, maybe because of stress, and well, it, that's yeah. why it didn't I, fit her anymore. A lot of people were talking about like what's different with Erica's face. And I was like, she might have gained a few pounds from stress eating and from coming from being so so skinny for her Broadway stuff. Yeah. Like she had to go through COVID, and plus the and way that her hair was styled, which I thought was beautiful, um, also kind of brought attention to her face that made it look a little bit more round mm -hmm. uh, or a little wider. I mean, actually, Bravo did not like pass up a chance to look at her whenever she made any kind of gesture with yeah. her face. It was, it was like, <gasps> Erica moved. And she also <gasps> oh, like, Erica moved again. Yeah. And it's just like, and most of the time she's just looking like a dead frog like, <laughs> at the camera, like past it. Like Terrible. that straight on look that she had, like it was just, that looks like hell. And, you know, she also wore a dress that if she was ga gaining any weight near her, like lower regions, yeah. that it was a wrap that would hide, hide that. that. Um, my biggest, and a lot of people were really hating on her dress, which I didn't mind her dress. I just hated the pink in the ribbon in her shoes didn't match the pink in her dress. You're a big stickler for matching. Uh, I am a, like, I colors. need the exact same shade. You the if same you're, you're going to wear the shade. same color, wear the same you shade. You need the, ma the right patone match. I mean, I have been a nightmare about that since I was a kid. I'm no freak. I know you are. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's one of my things. Um, another thing that was, this, I didn't tell you about this because I didn't want it to ruin the reunion for you, but I was listening to Bitch Sesh. I know I keep referencing them, but they were talking about how um, shiny Crystal's face is through this entire thing. Like, her makeup artist isn't powdering her, and oh. she looks really shiny and almost oily compared to all the other women I who never are... Pro that. That's why I never told you, because it really distracted me through the whole entire reunion, and I didn't want to ruin it for you. I have a love affair with Crystal. I love her. I know, and, and she's right about it. I mean, they're right about it. She does. She looks really shiny, but her mm. dress is beautiful. Her makeup's beautiful. Otherwise, she just looks really shiny. Yeah. Um, I did not like Lisa Brenna's outfit at all. Well, that's life, baby. Um, I like the idea behind it, but it just, no, it just didn't work for me. I didn't really care for the name of the wig either. Priscilla, was it? <laughs> I, don't, I, I wrote that down. Persephone? I, uh, I Priscilla. Priscilla. Priscilla, Priscilla, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it, was the it was the first one name that they shouted out. I'm like, Hey, give me some options. I want to. I want to yeah. see what my options are. I'm yeah. gonna name my wig. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not gonna name it the reunion. Not the reunion. Not at all. <laughs> but that would be Dorit's dress. Yes. Dorit's dress named the reunion. Embellished with thousands and thousands of white pearls. It was beautiful. It was, it was gorgeous. Beautiful. I don't really have anything named it looked, to say about it. It looked maybe a little bit heavy, but it didn't show. Yeah. yeah. But it looked gorgeous. Like the way it sat. Like the mesh pattern so when it like laid down on her side all the pearls got together so it looked like a mat it was yeah. really pretty i thought sutton looked really pretty but i thought her hair looked like mousy like and it, it looked like she needed to be it needed to be washed really oh. i didn't i didn't love sutton's it was hair. a little bit too meh it was a, it was quite meh did it have too much uh sea salt spray in it maybe that's what it was <laughs> garcelle looked gorgeous um i uh, nothing like really the thing that just stood out to me was Kyle's cleavage really I really didn't pay attention to the outfits this time for some reason oh well that that means something I mean it means that you know they just they didn't really bring it no you know what brought it was Kathy Hilton's jewelry she had this stunning diamond and ruby like golf bracelet on that looked very expensive and very gorgeous with I her bet red dress. It was expensive you're so rich so yeah so that wraps up the fashion you didn't even notice it there you go there you go <laughs> that's that's what it is i thought Whoops. seating was somewhat predictable I yeah mean, erica's I, erica's never been that close to andy on a reunion so i guess she's lucky in a way that her <laughs> life is falling apart and, and kyle of course is going to be right next to andy because she was kind of involved in all the issues plus she just started halloween ooh 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 I wonder, since Kyle was able to survive Halloween kills, 
Ooh, that's a spoiler. Oh, great. Is she gonna survive seen... this? Is she gonna survive this reunion? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, if you haven't seen Halloween Kills by now, it's been out for a few weeks. Yeah, it's been yeah, out it's... for a few weeks. But you know what? Kyle isn't really part of the drama this season. She's not, but she does she's survive. just pieces of every story. She inserts. Yeah. That's why Kyle's going to be on this show until uh, either her sisters get a spinoff, or she and she and her sisters get a spinoff, or she decides she's done. Kyle Richards. I mean, long live Kyle. Richards. Richard, she knows how to stay closest to Andy at the reunion. You know that's the coveted seat. Oh yeah, it is. That is incredible. So I mean, haven't housewives not shown up because they're not sitting next to Andy before? I don't know if that's ever been validated, but it sounds familiar. <laughs> it sounds like that happened in like I don't know. I want to say like Dallas, maybe. Who knows? Know. Who knows? We find out that this set is inspired by Kathy Hilton's courtyard. Oh my God, there's so many pretty things. The second he said that, I'm like, she's not going to know that that's her backyard well, or courtyard well, or anything. Well, very little prodding, she ended up figuring it out. Yeah, it, it took her a second. Take much. Took her she didn't second. take it too much. But dang, much. she's just a friend of first season, and she's like a coveted Listen, housewife now. Never has a friend of been brought in at the end of the first episode and remained on stage until it was over. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even realize even she was Even OG Vicky Gunvalson was just pulled in at the last minute <sighs> for her when she was friend of, so... Yeah, she's a full time cast member. She's she's got it best both ways. <laughs> she's only uh, required to do the friend of stuff, but she gets treated like a full time. Oh yeah, I mean she's. I mean all, all those women respect her so much. And whatever Kathy says goes. <laughs> but give me a Richard sister spinoff, please. Oh yeah, I want them to like do like the same thing like um, Paris Hilton and. Um, the simple life. The simple life. Oh, oh my God! Could you imagine the simple life with the with the Richard sisters? Oh my or? God! Yes! Oh my gosh! <laughs> that sounds incredible. <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine like what their reactions would be having to go and you know fill up milk. I am from speechless like at the farm. thought of Kathy Hilton doing a simple life type thing with Kim and Kyle. That yes, yes, <laughs> let's please, make it happen. Yes. So Andy gets right into it with Erica. Erica is right away very right put in. off, very nasty attitude. She's ready to fight. Like you already can tell, she's just over everything. Well, she reminds us that she is not allowed to talk about some things. Some things. And this is another. You know, again, I feel like. Even though she does acknowledge the victims like in episode three, I really do feel like her lawyers have told her not to recognize how bad she feels for the victims because it makes her it sound guilt. like, yes. It admits guilt. So I feel like that's, you know, all of the ladies in within one of these episodes agree that they don't think Erica knew any of this was going on. Yeah. So I feel comfortable siding with that. I don't think that ignorance is an excuse. And again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> I'm wrong. So we find out that uh, Sutton actually didn't call her actual attorney, but called a friend who was an attorney. And I think that was important to know. Yeah, it's not she went out and like seek legal Cons help. Yes. She talked to a friend that knows legal Justice yes, my best like friend is an attorney, and even when it's not law that she specializes in, I still ask her her opinion about things. Yeah, I've I asked mean, her opinion we, about this Jen Shaw situation, about this Erica Jordy situation. We, you heard it here, folks. We got an attorney on hold for our we do, real house we do. Yes, we so, do. So everything that we say, I'm just kidding. Ev <laughs> yes, we have one on retention. Yeah. Everything <laughs> on re we say on retainer, isn't it? Yes, whatever. I don't <laughs> retention, know. Retainer. Everything. We That's say why we have a lawyer. Cannot be. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that um, Kyle just reached a lawyer to get a breakdown of. This. She is I'm so just... intimidated by that LA Times article. Well, I mean, it had a lot of jargon in it, like like <laughs> lawyer. But jargon, again, Kyle jargon. is memorizing scripts of movies and television <laughs> shows, well, and she can't read an LA Times article. How big? Did, <laughs> how long could it be? I mean, it had to have been pretty long. Not the length of a script. <laughs> no, not the length. I mean, you could at least read it on your phone. Right. <laughs> now that I think about it, it's a little suspicious. <laughs> 
But we get to, it was a really easy to start off with Sutton's package because Sutton really was the one who was mostly legally concerned about her well being. Mm -hmm. um, so luckily, Sutton's face roller gets a little screen time. I love my roller. I just use it in the mornings now in the privacy of my bathroom. Again, yeah. I And her whole montage is just a crying fest. Right. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I wonder if she actually walks in those shoes. Did you notice her shoes? They have little balls, balls on the, the end of the heel. Yeah. I wonder if she walks in them or if she puts them on when she sits down. With her bad ankle, I'd probably sit down and put them on. And plus, it's as expensive as they are. I want to keep yeah, them in pristine yeah, shape, you know? I feel like they're more show pieces than they are fashion that you wear. Yeah. I, I'm curious about that. Something ain't right. Sutton's mom. We re I forgot that Sutton has such a contentious relationship with her mom, but I, I didn't remember it being so big that it was a big, huge part of Sutton's package. That clip back of her crying about her dad and like, don't you just miss him even a little bit? And that mom is stone-faced. I don't miss him. No, I don't miss him at all. Like, yeah. no, nothing. Like, just so stone cold about it. They clearly it. ended because we weren't happy yeah, with each other. Yeah, you can't expect us just because it I can relate to Sutton's like mom him. there with some people yeah. in my life. But I love that Sutton's mom, like, advised her. Because, you know, Sutton probably, Sutton's mom was probably, like, very blunt with her. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Sutton, you're probably overreacting. Mm -hmm. Made Sutton feel stupid about it. So that Sutton <laughs> had to feel another Sutton. way. But Sutton reads Renna for be like saying that she doesn't have a business. My business. I, I, I know. She made sure to say that. But honestly, when Lisa Renna's like, she owns a store that's not a business. I'm like, that's the definition of what a business is, right? Yeah. I think that Rena was so equating business to like a brand, an empire of some oh, sort. Lisa Rena. More so than having an individual store in Hollywood or whatever. Listen, yeah, Skinny Girl is the only else. brand that's there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sutton is in her new home approximately a year after living at Kyle's. Jeez. And apparently Sutton doesn't know how to open a chimney flue. Well, I'm, if you didn't, she, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought you would know how to do that. That, I mean, or I would, if, if, as soon as the smoke started coming out of the chimney, I would call Kyle and be like, can you f tell me why the chimney doesn't work? And then maybe Kyle could tell her, you know? You open the flume. Holy cow. I mean, she like melted it. It looked so burned. She's like, I didn't do that much damage. House... In the picture, I was like, it's charred. And how smoky must the house have been? That's why they have to do repairs on it now, because they probably have to replace a lot of wood. But you know what? They didn't ask Sutton for any money. They just kind of outed her on national television. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what's worse. I mean... But, you know, I felt that Sutton's package was uh, kind of small compared, considering all the drama that she had with Gar uh, with Erica and, and all Crystal. the drama she had with Crystal. Yeah. But it was a pretty uh, small package. The saddest part was hearing that she got broken up with on <sighs> Valentine's Day weekend. This is why we didn't like Michael from the beginning. Just because... <laughs> Well, because I thought it was lame, really, to be honest with you. But, I mean, that's hurtful. To really just be like, I just can't. I just can't. I just, I can't. Girl, I just can't I with can't. you. I can't. It's kind of believable, maybe. I mean, yeah. But it's, st it's still really sad. Girl, I just can't. I just can't. I can't. I just no, can't. No, I can't. That's like... Sutton, I'm sorry. I just can't. That was like you when you first moved here and we brought you up to the natural hot springs and it was like around all of that murky water and you're like, I can't. I just... No, I'm not I getting in that water. I can't. No, I can't. I, I can't get in that water. I can't. <laughs> That's a great way to break up. <laughs> but Sutton's dating now and she's enjoying it. And Erica's like... Oh, how are you getting dates and I'm not? I mean, that's I, generally what she was saying. I and yeah, that's exactly what she's saying. And she was not getting attention. Um, how for about a while. because you have like a twenty million bounty on your head? Yeah, who, who wants to f that? Yeah, no <laughs> thanks to that. Probably just gonna have to have a lot of anonymous sex. And then next we move over to Garcelle's Garcelle. package. So, you know, while Dorit and Rena loved seeing a more sensitive side of Garcelle, Dorit thought that Garcelle was being passively provocative passively provocative <laughs> passively that... pro saying passively provocative is a passive aggressive way to say passive aggressive <laughs> passively provocative 
<laughs> I loved it. I I loved it. I want to use it. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> I, I loved it so much. I was like, you better make up a new word. Term. Yeah, new yeah, term. A new slang. I loved this is it. Dorit's slang. You can't use bully anymore, so that's why you have to make you're, up passively pr- provocative. You're perpetually passively provocative. provocative. <laughs> <laughs> and persistent. Persistent, perpetually. Oh my God, we can't. We can't. We can't, we can't. We can't get into this. <laughs> but Dory retracts the bully and Garza is like, well, you owe me an apology. <laughs> These women, you have to take accountability and offer a formal re- apology. Don't use the word. But Dory's like, well, I just want you to understand. You're not a bully, but part of what a bully is is incessant. It, that is, she was showing signs of being a bully. Of doing bully things. Yes, but she's not nece- she's not labeled a bully. Mm-hmm. And Garcelle's like, well, I thought that maybe even, you know, like my old friend, Rena, would at least back me up. And Rena's like, well, I was on Dorit's side. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and there's, um, you know, there is an evidence of Garcelle saying a lot of things in her confessionals rather than to her face. But don't all these ladies do that? All of, I mean, that's what you do. That's what you do. <laughs> And then Rena jumps in, and Garcelle and Rena have a pretty intense moment. It was and ugly. Elisa's being was like persistent <laughs> and perpetually <laughs> passive, <laughs> passively provocative. Passively provocative here. Passively provocative. She's, but they were like really barking at each other. Oh, it was yeah. ugly. It, it was, was ugly. it was gnarly scene. But leave it to Dorit to just bring it back to herself. <laughs> yeah, that's hold on. Let's take a commercial break because we need to wait. To like. I need to take a breath. Well, you have to take a break after we... Garcelle yells. Or, I mean, uh, Dorit yells I at know, Garcelle. I know, but Dorit tries to make a point and it takes forever. And they ha- they have to put in a commercial break just to fit in her long speech. They did. They had to co- do a commercial break in the middle of her speech. But then it turns out her speech was about a scene that she wasn't even there. <laughs> Dorit, girl, you're just reaching for any kind of, like, angle that you possibly can. I mean, Dorit's lucky that she got robbed recently, then that kept her on the show. Because, you know, people were saying that Dorit was not invited back for this season, but I have seen some things on social media with her being there with some of the women. Mm. So, I hope it wasn't because she got robbed, but, you know, sounds like it was... For the better, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but Dorit and Garcelle would like to move on, and to be honest with you, it was also petty they needed to. Like, I don't dislike her. Okay. At all. I don't dislike her at all. It was so it was so petty, because Dorit didn't even know what she wanted. No, no. I Dorit... want you to tell me to my face, but I don't want you to tell me to my face. She just wanted to be inserted <laughs> into some sort of conflict, because that's and how you stay and on. And the thing that the conflict was, was conflict that she's had in other seasons for the same issue with all the other girls. And I'm like, Dorit, bring something near the table. I mean, but you know, they are right that Kyle has also been accused of the same. So I like that Dorit just got a little bit of a moment of vindication. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless. So we move from Garcelle versus Dorit. Did I just say Garcelle versus Dorit <laughs> to Garcelle versus Rena? Am I boring you? Yes, Lisa Rena. And it just boils down to that Garcelle doesn't trust Rena, so she didn't know how to take Rena's multiple acts of kindness throughout the season. I mean, she's Lisa Rena did try very much. She was still stuck in her ways, but she was still being very nice to Garcelle and trying to mend the issues, because Garcelle made it seem like she wanted it to move forward, but she was just using semantics. <laughs> All of these women. Uh, you say you <laughs> used the wrong choice of word, and it's... But it, Garcelle's the queen of that. She oh, yeah. She knows how to say things, and like that whole thing with uh, Andy Cohen later on, when she's like, no, you said Lisa Renna. Yeah. I just agree. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. But that doesn't mean I'm admitting or saying that. Uh-huh. And it's like, Garcelle, come on. You need to stop that. Um, you know, I don't like it when Erica inserts herself in other conversations. I don't mind when anyone else does it, but right now I'm just like, Erica, you're, We're gonna getting, get too, you. you're getting too much time that yeah. I don't really care about your opinion about what's going on with anybody else. But she did have a point. She's like, Lisa keeps doing all these acts of kindness towards you and you're not receptive. When, when does Should she just she give stop? up? stop? Like, yeah, it if was you don't valid, trust but I was still like, Erica, no, you're getting too, you get, yeah. you get your own. Uh, but and then, even more stuff comes out. Like this, the bomb is, is dropped. Yeah, this is the reason why Garcelle has had 
a chip on our shoulder about Lisa Rinna. And the fact she heard from somebody that Lisa told them that she didn't think that her bringing race into the group was a good idea because it's not that type of show. And so Garcelle, instead of bringing this up to Lisa at any point on or off camera, she just held a grudge to her. And she's like, well, that's why you're holding a grudge. She's like, yeah, it pissed me off. And I'm like, Garcelle, <laughs> like you should say something. That's your and then for her to be like, I would never say anything. And Garza to double down, like, I don't know that. Oh, the shade of it all. Uh, yeah, and I that, was like, that can ruin someone's career. Yeah. That can ruin someone's entire future. All the women kind of get up in arms about this stuff. And like, even Crystal. I think it's BS. I don't think Rena said that. No. And, and I think that. Garcelle should have brought up a long time ago. You know, if I thought that there was something behind it, I would totally be Team Garcelle for this. But I think Garcelle, I, I'm, I, I'm not on it. And I'm tired of this whole. I heard it from somebody, but I'm not going to tell you who it is. Like yeah. I'm tired of this game. Like in every mm -mm. single Housewives franchise, give me the resources so that you, a, yeah, a new storyline can come out. That can ruin someone's life. My mind was completely blown. But you and know what? Rinna, Rinna handled it. She did. She, she bulldozed her way through that. Mm -hmm. And she found a way to prove Garcelle wrong, that that wasn't the real reason. You know, I'm so f***ing shady. <laughs> and Rinna really like pulled her move where you get in their own personal space and don't give them a chance to say otherwise. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She jumped right in the sea with her and just gave her a huge yes. hug and just held onto her. I'd be like, listen, yes. you have to love me. Like, you have, you have, to, have to love to squash me no matter right what. Now. Like, yeah. or else it's never gonna end. Can we do this? Yes. And it happens. And I need to have evidence on camera that you knew that that wasn't who I was. And I didn't say that. Well, Lisa and she, Garcelle even said like, would you even tell me that to my face even if it was true? And Lisa's like, I would. And everyone's like, are you, are you, are you kidding me? Lisa would say that. <laughs> yeah. She would tell her your mind. And then she talked her way out of it somehow. Oh, somehow. Or she, but cry she her would way out of it or But she would never it. say something like no, that. That no, is insane. No, no. That is insane. I didn't like that. Uh, you I know, didn't again, like it. I don't. I, I felt like it was a card not worth pulling out. Yeah. Um, but luckily, we'll see how squashed it is. They're already filming for next season. Oh, geez. And then they bring Kathy out for no apparent reason. She's like the show pony. They bring her out to do this weird Halloween commercial that we're supposed to believe was a, in uh, real life, real it, time. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't planned out at all. <laughs> no one thought to do that. I don't even know if I'm really convinced it was Kathy in the Michael Myers mask. <laughs> I don't think it was. Yeah. I think they just filmed somebody do it and they're like, Kathy. Halloween Kills is on Peacock. They they're own making Bravo. their money. They're making their money. Uh, yeah, that was That's why she's sitting stage. right next to Andy Cohen. So they bring Kathy out in like the last 10 minutes and then bring it right back to Erica. I know. <laughs> but I did need like the short little clips of behind the scenes like of Kathy Hilton just sitting there nodding or putting her makeup on. Like, <laughs> Doing Kathy things. It was kind of a breath of fresh air kind Absolutely. of points. <laughs> Absolutely. So we end episode one starting off Erica's divorce package, which is really what episode two starts with. But Tom didn't go to see Chicago. Tom hadn't read Erica's book, which that really blows my mind as an attorney. He probably had someone read it for him and say, is there anything in there negative yeah, about maybe. me? Um, Tom wasn't faithful. Was Erica faithful to him? Da -da -da -da. Commercial. <laughs> End of episode. So she pauses for a moment. And she's like, yes, I was faithful until I filed for divorce. But as soon as I signed those papers, I went and got it done. I put it all over my clip and all over my division. <laughs> Because I do kind of believe that because she's in the spotlight, so that rumors would come out really quick, and Tom could really use that against her oh, and 100%. take everything from her. Absolutely, absolutely. And plus, she could claim fidelity if she wanted to, but there's um, no money to go for, so why does it matter? I'm, uh, That's the whole thing. There's no money to go for. None of it matters, other than just I mean, getting... he's, he's on death's door. Like, he doesn't even care. But she just wants to not be married to him anymore. That's uh. it. So here we go. Question, question, question. Why was Erica talking about how awesome their marriage was over the years, and now it's horrible? Well, that's a given. I mean, I, I, I mean, there were good times and there were bad times. Why didn't she leave sooner? Where was she going? She's like, I gave Tom my money. 
Yes. I didn't have access to any of my own money. All of which, the finances which were kept confusing out of the firm. to me because if she had been kind of planning to leave him for like maybe three years, let's say three years, why would she be handing all of her money to him? Wouldn't she be saving and putting something away if she knew that he was being unfaithful to her and at but, one point she was going to have to escape? But she wasn't trying to. She was trying, I guess, to make it work or to just live with it. I, don't know. I mean, supposedly she didn't leave until she. Until the news came out, like three days later. So I'm like, very su- like that's very sus. I have nothing to hide. I don't know. Like I don't she know. found out about the legal stuff, and she was like, "Oh, I gotta get a divorce real quick." No, right she, now. the divorce came before the big I know. bomb. Yeah. I think she found out about the big bomb before anyone else did. Well, according to her, she didn't. According yeah, to yeah. her, she didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's not allowed to talk about the timeline that she uh, sought legal ca- counsel mm-hmm. to learn how to talk. Um, their d- divorce has been delayed due to Tom's competency hearing, and Tom has had at least three mistresses. Erica found out about the third one on the on day, the day she, she was left. Like... Maybe that was the final straw. And I love it that he still has a flip phone. <laughs> and she couldn't figure out how to text back. She couldn't text it. She was like, how do you put a space? I think it's zero, isn't it? So, does someone have my Motorola razor? Oh my gosh. I bet it, that's what it is. It's like a, like, remember like the one you could only play Snake on him back in the day? Like... Yes. Oh, the rough. ancient days. Um, Erica posted the screenshots from the mistress when she was angry, not when she was drunk. I bet you it was both. A little bit of both. Maybe just a little bit of both. <laughs> um, Erica was not allowed to talk about how she left, though, which is weird. Yeah, that's it just what makes could things be a, more What suspicious. could be illegal? That's why I'm like... About where she got the money to rent a truck, maybe? I don't know. Or the money to get a house, the money to yeah. get a new car. Like, she got a whole new life overnight. Yeah. So And if she didn't have access to money, how'd she do all that? So she didn't want to talk about it. Okay, girl. So what did the other women think about Tom when they went to their last to their house last season? He seemed to be on the ball with his stories. And then they talk about how, you know, people with dementia, with Alzheimer's, can regale stories from years ago. That they've repeated before they're out their life. Yeah, but can't tell you what happened yesterday. And hearing that it's like he's on a loop was made a lot of sense. It really did. It made a lot of sense. It did. Um, Did Erica leave just because she found out he was sick and then left? And she's like, I mean, no, that was not. I mean, I... I, It's because he wasn't getting help. Yeah. And I couldn't watch him deteriorate. She's like, I really just gave my all until I couldn't give any more. And when you're watching somebody you really care about and love, like, destroy themselves and be unfaithful, and it's like the whole time you're like, okay, how much longer do I have to put up with this? Right, yeah, yeah. So we end Erica's divorce package with, would Erica have married him if she knew who she... knew then what she knows now? And she was like... To be honest with you, I don't. I don't know if I ever knew him. It's hard to. Yeah. It's hard She's, to say. She may have known him like maybe a little bit in the beginning, but towards the end, he was a completely different person. I mean, that's a long time for people to change. Or what if too. he was doing all these horrible things all along and she didn't know? That's sad. And that makes him a different person. Mm-hmm. But she, you know, she gets to go on about how. Like, she's in survival mode right now, and that's why she's so angry, that's why she's so feisty, and I, she's right about that. I'm not giving her a path, pass. It's saying that it's okay. Yeah, I'm not giving her a pass. I relate to her, I understand that she really does feel like a caged animal, and by the end of this reunion, she's so freaking tired that she's just... All she has left is the fight. There's no more strength for the refinement. There's no more strength for the patience. There's mm-hmm. only strength left for the fight. Yeah. And guess what? There's going to be some winners, and there's going to be some losers. And that's kind of how she's living her every day. And everyone's trying to like get through to her. Like Because of you reacting like this, it makes everyone scared to ask you any kind of question. So it makes us worry. Yeah. Because we don't know what's going on, and you've given us... A little bit of information here and then a different information to somebody else over here because you're willing to give them more info. And it's like that's making things a lot worse for you in the end. But she just doesn't see that. Uh, Yeah. She throughout this whole episode, she still doesn't get it. No. she, well, she has a moment. She has a moment. Mm. But And then also Dorit only gets a moment. Her package is really super short. But we've already talked about her and Garcelle. So really what's left to talk about other than, you know. Her fashion and talking too much. Yeah. And that she hasn't had a nose job. 
I don't know. We're going to have to just get over it. We're going to have to believe uh, it. Okay. But this whole scene was shorter than a conversation with Dorit. Oh, it 100% <laughs> was. Nobody let her talk. So it made, it made me kind of feel worried about her future a little bit. I enjoy Dorit. I think just as a human being, she's fascinating. That's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we go over to Rena's package. Harry Hamlin, he's I, the big issue. I mean, not issue, but the big topic. Yeah, I mean, husband of the year, it seems. Yeah, he seems like an awesome guy. Um, and Harry Styles. And Scott Disick. I mean, there's. it's not about Rena at all. No, it's not. It's not about It's Rinna about Rinna Lisa Rena's old fashions being on her daughters. <laughs> I, I love that, I, you know, I've always been concerned that that stuff was kept in a garage, too. No, I didn't even think about the security aspect of it all. I, was but I love that Andy was immediately like, get her. that out of your garage where people can go and steal and it. And I guess there's a place that actually holds on to yeah. clothes and, like, specializes the air quality and the rooms for him. Like, that's, I've never heard of yeah. that. But it's smart, like, antique. Yes. Like wedding dresses. That Tom Ford dress alone. I want that Save Tom, it forever. I want that. I'm going to recreate that forever. Tom Ford dress. It's going to look ghetto and bad on It's going to be so sexy. Yeah. Yes, darling. Yes. Harry <laughs> Hamlin thinks that Lisa is the smartest person he's ever met. That's so sweet of him to say. Because he probably knows that that's something that she doesn't feel about herself and it makes her feel good mm -hmm. to hear that, but he can't be honest about that. Lisa only speaks in one-liners and cliches. <laughs> Stay true to yourself. Take one day to time and live in the moment <laughs> home is where the heart is bear <laughs> right <laughs> Bare feet are welcome. Get it with bare feet. Oh my God, life. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she would say if she came on our podcast. I, well, 100%. She but would. please, Lisa, we're not coming on. Oh my pod. gosh. You're welcome to the hot closet anytime. Um, but another small and uneventful package. Rena, you better find some good drama next season. I want some Harry Hamlin sauce. I want some Harry Hamlin sauce. <laughs> I handled his hose quite well. And then finally, we brought Kathy in for the last 10 minutes of the first episode. Episode, but we actually talked to Kathy in the last 10 minutes of this episode. Yes, and I... It's about their relationship, of course, because that's the only thing that she has really going on, be except for Hunky Dory <laughs> in this episode. Who is Hunky Dory? But then, like... They talk about American Woman, which I haven't seen American Woman. I watched the first episode. Like, I was kind of bored with it. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's a very big issue. And then, of course, they start talking about, you know, their mom. And that's a trigger for Kathy. And then we get to watch Kathy sob. And then it's the end of the episode. We end another episode with Kathy crying. I like, think it's rude. This was very not... It was not nice. Because I, I started crying, too. <laughs> and I've already told you all to quit doing that. <laughs> I've already I, said quit I doing know, that. I know y'all are listening to us, Bravo. I, I we know you're listening in. <laughs> but yeah, because when to make we make sure we don't say some dish that we hear from the Salt Lake City Housewives. So, I should before we get into part three, should we take a? Oh quick yeah, break? it's definitely time for a break. Are you kidding me? Because we need to hear from one of our housewives. We do need to hear from a housewife. Okay, well, um, we're gonna take a quick brock. I'm gonna refill my cup. I'm gonna have some shrimp, some scored shrimp. And then we'll be right back. Bye. We need a millennial. Hi, this is Jen Shaw from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and you're listening to The Real House Bears Podcast. Thank you so much oh. for that. It is so nice that... Heather and Jen Shaw just randomly come into our podcast area and uh, once say a week it. we call them yeah. up and like girl we're recording we're taking podcast. our break they come in here they come right into the hot closet and they say it just for us really and for the them. audience it's really so thank you them. ladies and this is what I want people to know me for so we start off where we left off with Kathy, Kathy crying, crying which that I means can't the angels this anymore. Are, that means the baby Jesus is crying. <laughs> Angels are dying. <laughs> Angels are losing their wings. An, an angel loses their wings when Kathy Hilton cries. <laughs> Seriously, it's very upsetting. Kyle doesn't regret doing American Woman because she didn't do anything wrong. It was an homage she, to yeah. her mom. She but, wishes that they actually watched you it. Know, Kathy is really sensitive about her. I mean, remember, like when she when Kyle said something that like their mom couldn't cook. Mm -hmm. Kathy didn't want her to say something bad like that. Bad, like don't, so don't portray her protective. that. But it's cute that she didn't know how to cook. I know. I like, mean, like I love Tombstone pizzas, and people think it's a trash pizza, but that's what yeah. I grew up on. I'm hungry. Those cheap 
Tombstone Pizza is so I delicious. Understand. I understand. I understand. That's why I love a good hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love Octavia Butler. <laughs> Kathy thinks that the reason, Kathy thinks she's the reason why Kyle and she got back together. Yeah. But I Kyle think... thinks it's the, the kids. It, yeah. Paris and Portia and All the Nikki kids were tired and... of spending Christmas apart from each other yes. and wanted to do family stuff, which is very much needed. Yeah. Kathy does know the lady's name, but she doesn't know how to say it. She, she says Paula. Paula, but it's actually Paula. Paula. Yes, yeah. uh, because that's a that's you know, how you s- a Latino name, yeah. a Latina name. So I love that. But I'm, I'm sure she's just like, I've corrected this woman a million times on the way you say my name. I just, I'm, I'm Paula. Now, yeah, I'm you know? Paula. Yeah, I'm Paula. It's just easy. All of the sisters are on good standing. Again, I'm all here for a Richard Sisters spinoff. Simple life. Yes. Simpler life. Simpler life. <laughs> <laughs> Hard knock life, maybe. <laughs> and then Crystal's package. So this is when I get, really got distracted by how shiny she was. Well, Thanks, Casey Wilson. It definitely covered Chinese culture, being adventurous, recovering from bulimia, working at an escort service, and leather pants. I forgot that she had an eating disorder. I forgot that was even part of her story. Yeah, it was just an episode. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, and then the arrested... Escort agency or a madam. She wasn't arrested. I think we screwed that up the first time when we covered that in the real episode. I think so, too. <laughs> but all of Crystal's real drama was at the beginning of the season, but she really was a major part of the beginning of the season with her and Sutton. Oh, yeah. Um, I love the la- the leather pants. I liked person. them. I thought they were cute. Who would have thought that such a childish little insult would have gotten Turned such this- a reaction? Imagine if they do go into the clubhouse. Jealous of what? Your ugly leather pants? Well, there's really nowhere to place them, but yes, I they think need they to should. Kind of be in the clubhouse. Somewhere. I think they should. I wonder how expensive those leather pants were. <laughs> To just go into a case in the closet. <laughs> but well, we're, I mean, folded up in the closet. She's got money to do that. Yeah. I mean, look at that purse she had in, early in the season. Dang, that was like oh. $95,000. Yes. yes. That's, a, that's a small home right there. And then we're reminding about Crystal or Sutton bringing the coat into Crystal. Yeah, the a violation of privacy. The violation. It's really, again, it's all about the word choice. It's all because she used the word violate. Sutton was never going to let it go. But Crystal didn't want to diminish her feelings at the time. So she's not going to let it go either. Yeah. But this story about racism is unbelievable. That she had to delete her Twitter account because people are harassing her so much because of she was Chinese. How like, is what that? What is wrong with people? How is that still happening in 2021? How? It's disgusting. It, and I, that's what people don't understand with people that are from a different culture. The stuff that they have to deal with on a day, like, like for instance, being gay. When our wedding, per, your wedding proposal to me um, got on the n- local news here, I saw the comments, and the comments were horrible. Yeah, we had to not read them. Yeah, people were horrible, and, like, saying horrible things about us. So, um, it's just some people, like, people that are straight, when you have a, a proposal like that, you don't get hate mail like that. You don't yeah. know what that's like. But I, I thought that the way she presented her culture was quite beautiful this season. I specifically talked about it in earlier seasons. Um, it, was, it was not preachy, and it, it, I wanted to learn more. It was fun, yeah. It yeah, really got I me interested in more. it. They, she really, like, I wanted to know her story more because yeah. it was fascinating and beautiful and not aggressive. And you shouldn't let a percentage of assholes on social media define not only your experience, but the experience that you put out there for others. 100%. Absolutely. And, and there's a time and a place to be aggressive. Don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. not saying that. But I just really... Uh, the finale party was one of the most beautiful finale parties we've ever so had. It was so nice. Like, it almost made me cry when the dragons came out. Yeah, it, it was, was just so much fun. And putting the money in their mouth and stuff. Like, I thought that was so funny. But did you notice that there is only one box of tissues between all these ladies? <laughs> yeah. Andy Cohen is the gatekeeper to it. Yes. He's like... You haven't cried enough yet, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see those tears streaming. Then I'll give you a tissue. For you. No, <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> and then we get a nice little fashion montage. 
And again, we talk about Rena keeping her one of a kind in a detached garage. Um, Garcelle gives Dorit the best dressed award. What do you think about that? I dress for myself, what I like. I mean, get it, girl. I was more surprised that Dorit pays full price for all of her clothes. Where, do the, where does their money come from? That's why they don't have like a luxury home that you notice. Right, there's no Because you said you don't notice her home at all. All of her money's going to fashion. I want to know where their money comes from. PK? No, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, he's lives. losing millions of billions. He's losing two billion uh, dollars a year on real estate. You know those rich estate. people? They just find more money somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, it blew me away. It blew me away uh, that she pays full price. And I don't know. What but I mean, when from. you have I, like one item in a multiple collection that could actually buy a small house, of you better have the best security and alarm system and vault oh. for all those things. You have a whole closet that could buy. A block no, of houses. No, she doesn't anymore. Well, not anymore. That is devastating. I, I hate that our kids were home doing that. Luckily, That's it, terrifying. That's terrifying. Luckily, they don't yeah. know what went on. It really guts me that those earrings that Mauricio gave to Kyle on Watch What Happens Live were have been stolen. stolen. Oh, uh, that's... Uh, and especially knowing that they were, like, the biggest piece of jewelry. That she's ever had. Uh, and how much you meant to her. And then Kathy buys Rick a sweater for Christmas and for anniversaries. <laughs> I love Kathy Hilton's yes. montage. It's just full of crazy. I mean, she gets a real package. She does. Just like, I mean, her package is as big as Dorit's or Rena's. I'm like one of the three little bears. Yep. Never has a friend I've been, been on the reunion stage for this. And time. I wasn't the only one to think that that hat was a lampshade. Yeah. And she has they call one. They the lampshade hat. She has one in every color. And she has a box fan in every color, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, Hunter travels. He puts a little fan in his suitcase. I sacrifice an article of clothing or shoes. A pair of shoes, for really. that. And I also travel with a pillow, too. So that both, like, takes up a lot of my suitcase. <laughs> but um, it's worth it because if I, I won't be able to sleep. I know. I don't I know. know where I got that from. I wonder if I got it from my mom or something. I don't know. Well, you weren't raised in the Waldorf Astoria, clearly. <laughs> I wish. Can you? I mean, she literally raised her kids in the Waldorf Astoria. That's, Can you imagine what that no, was like? No. It's like Richie Rich or something. It's wild to me. And what's even wilder is to find out that the Hilton family no, runs the, no longer runs the Hilton Hotel. They don't own it anymore. It now we sold. know why she's actually not, not going to free at the Hilton's. Hiltons. Yeah, yeah. She's like, no, I'm not giving Hilton's money anymore. I'm going to go wild. stay at the Hampton Inn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Hilton. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, the wow. And then I was surprised to find out, you know, they keep referencing Andy turning to Eric and saying, I'm going to fire up the skewer and turn it up. Okay, blah, 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 blah. It was just a little joke. Yeah, in just between. between them, that wasn't even supposed to be on. That was dirty. That was dirty editing. Throwing darts is not being direct, Andy. Dirty, dirty, dirty. But we now get into, we've had Erica's divorce package, now as her legal problem package. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was wrong. I guess she only gets two packages out of, well, she, the whole thing's about her, let's face it. It's Erica's keeping score of everybody that has scorned her so far. Yeah, and that dinner between Kyle and Mauricio and Pikai and Dorit lost. I know, did you see points. Kyle's face? Kyle's like, oh! But you know what? <laughs> Again, they weren't laughing at Erica. They were laughing at, at the, the situation. And they were laughing at Dorit's comment uh, yeah, that a surgeon would say, let's save his ankle yeah. and not worry about his head. And plus, that's how the guys get over issues. They joke about it. Yes. I mean, Mauricio did flat out say there are like like there are lies being told or something like mm -hmm. there's a lot of inconsistencies or something yeah. like that. What I have been saying is true. But I guess that is what happens when you just give little pieces of the story. And that are time. mixed as well. And Erica's afraid to say anything. Well, get off the show, bitch. Well, <laughs> she can't pay her bills if she does that. It's true. But here's the, this is like really important. The big deal. What's the difference between Teresa's case and Erica's case? There are victims. victims. That's the huge case. difference. But again, is it Erica's case? Is it Erica's case? Well, she did have to, she did 
receive her life and her luxuries from that. But she didn't know it at the time, and now there's no way she can pay it back. Well, there's no way for her to prove it that she didn't know about it. That's the thing. Well, all of the ladies, all every single woman on that stage agree that they didn't think Erica knew. Well, unless they're the jurors of the case, it's not going to happen. So, but, innocent until proven guilty. Because those videos she made of being expensive and, like, worth a lot and, like, too expensive for you, like, that's it was, it was gonna a, hurt. It was a character. That's gonna it hurt. A character. I know, it's, and that's what she's trying to say that that's her Instagram profile files too it's that's yeah. her character i'm like but you're talking about real issues like serious issues it's gonna be rough you're harassing people like you're trolling trolls and like that doesn't look great on somebody that's sitting on a 20 million dollar dead parents and burn victims and all this yeah. crazy stuff like sitting on top of you but erica finally directly says that she feels horrible about the victims She's kind of said it at least once this season, or maybe mm -hmm. only once this season. To be but, but it was you. more of like, of course I feel bad for them. They are the victims. So yeah, more of like but a this time thought. she's very directly says it. Mm -hmm. um, but then what about her social media? And we've talked about that. But I did like how she said she's like the the best way for me to help the victims, whether it's true or not, is to follow along with the law and follow along with the courts what they need that's the only way that i can help them whether it's true or it's not true and then erica tries to go on this big long diatribe about how the her problem with the women is that the women didn't come to her she was the source they could have come and talked to her anytime but no erica you were so unapproachable you were so Oh my gosh, you would snap at them and threaten them. Yeah, so you can't Whether really... a promise or a threat, it was still a threat. And I understand that you're in this space like, listen, I'm going to lash out. I can't help it. You're just going to have to forgive me. Well, I you're I can't but... ask you any questions if you're going to yeah. you've outcasted Sutton already. You showed right. you cut Sutton's head off in front of all of us. Yeah. Like that was And then cut Crystal's head off just now. And I'm not apologizing. Just a second ago, like just for asking a question like why are you mad? It's I hate that I can relate to Erica's headspace so bad because I don't want to. Because I but you can't, can't relate excuse. to her um, her reactions. Yeah, I can't excuse how she's behaving, but I really get why. I, she's oh, I totally understand it. And plus, she's just getting grilled this whole season, like her, and she has no idea what's next, and she doesn't have anybody there anymore. Yeah, she used to have Tom she's there. still talking to Tom every day. Oh my gosh! And the fact that he called five times during, I wanted I wanted to be like, show it to me. I wish Andy would have said that. I wanted Andy to be like, show me. Right. Show me the missed calls. I want to see this because I want to see if she's lying or not. Well, I wonder if she's lying if she actually asked him if he did it or not. But I think she's not allowed to say that. Yeah, I think she's, she's not. not, to not. That. She's not. Uh, so, she catches herself because that would because she would have to answer that question in court. Mm -hmm. What he actually said. Yeah. So smart catch for her. But she asked her why he would leave her with millions of dollars of lawsuits pointed at her. Yeah. Not why did you do this or did you do this? Yeah, why did you do this to these people or did you do this? And then the editing and all of the previews coming up to this, like we really have seen the fourth episode already and all of like the previews uh, coming up. But it really made us look like... She it made it look like she was going to lie about it versus get emotional about it. Yeah, she had to like, you could see her her wheels working in her head. Like, yeah. how should I go approach this? But do you know what the tagline should be for her next episode is, or for her next season if she comes What's back? That? How, how do you think back? that makes me feel? Because she says that throughout this whole season, and especially during this reunion. How do you think that makes me feel? Well, we're, we we know that makes you feel bad or angry, <laughs> you know? Well, you know how it makes Kathy Hilton feel? Like her lips are chapped. She needs to put on more <laughs> lipstick. Kathy! Thank God for Kathy Hilton. <laughs> I need her so much. We needed that moment. We needed that moment. $20 million apparently was not transferred into EJ Global. Apparently that was false information. False information. Leaked false information. <laughs> Erica would not have been on a reality show had she known all of this stuff that was going on. But again, why weren't the women questioning her and why didn't they just come up and talk to her? And, and again, everyone's like, well, you're kind of uh, mean. <laughs> and we're getting to episode four. Erica is exhausted. Oh, yeah. She's, she's I mean, tired. They had out. to have been there on the 12th hour. She's even lashing out at Andy. Oh, yeah. She's really had to just and and try to explain her way out of the I'm coming for you comment. It was really an empty threat. We all know it was just an empty threat. But now Erica has to like come No, up. I I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know because I don't 
really know Erica Jane and you don't know somebody until they're desperate. I'm not gonna get mad. They're the type of people that you would think that they wouldn't push you over the board because there's only so much water left on the boat. But when you're backed up in a corner, you'll do some nasty things to somebody. And, and then, that's what I think Sutton was afraid of, was that one just random act. Okay, okay. I mean, I would be scared, too, if somebody threatened me and they had their whole world is falling apart. What do they have to lose? What, are they, mean, what do they have to Sutton lose? Sutton hired security for a full week. You should have. Good for you. She can, she can afford that. Oh, hell yeah. Those little, those little arms of hers aren't going to push anybody back. Erica caught herself for a moment. She's like, if I would have said this on Potomac or Atlanta... And I was like, she is not just going to call out the colored cast, is she? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was afraid of that, too. But she pulled NYC Which... at the last second. I was like, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you could have really got yourself in way more Oh, my gosh. Like yeah, you would have never come back. Um, Erica justifies leaving parts out as not, like, lying, but protecting Tom. <laughs> Just because I don't give you the right information doesn't mean I'm lying to you. Right? Like, how does that make any sense? And why has Rena been so supportive? She's gone for Yolanda for having Munchausen. She's gone after Kim's alcoholism. She's gone after Denise's alleged lesbian love affair. We had a really good replay of... <sighs> You're so angry. I don't... E Your favorite Don't you subject. dare. Ugh. Um, and... Rena is haunted by all of those times. She's haunted by all of them. So why is it just this specific time and this specific person that she has been able to keep her mouth shut? She is... Like, out of nowhere. Uh, you know, Granted, she may feel bad and she may have learned from her mistakes finally after Garcelle She is living with out. the consequences of her reactions. Every day. Every day. Every day. day. <laughs> I loved the word analogous. Analogous, were, I know yes, he said that. When they that. were comparing Vanderpump to Girardi, mm -hmm. I was like, ooh, I like that. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. Of course, I had no idea what Analogous. Oh. <laughs> All I want to know is, how do I get my hands on some? Yes. <laughs> Why did Erica turn on Sutton after she was such a good friend, like flying everyone in, to New York City? And then exactly. we never really got an answer. No, we never did. <laughs> We never got an answer. And I, I'm to be honest with you, I still don't have an answer about the car flipping stuff. Well, can you believe there's not a police report? No. No, 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 no. no they no, can't no, find no, one. No, what does that mean? No, 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 no. What does that mean? They can't find a police report. <laughs> How does when does that happen? Was one never Especially filed? Especially with somebody such a high profile. I mean, I guess they maybe just paid someone to tow it and not because she said she found him after hours of him being there. How did nobody Supposedly call the there was a 911 call. Where's the 911 call? Yeah, there's nothing. She said there was a 911 call, so there has, that has to be on report somewhere. Oh, I, don't, I, I just don't... There, it, the more she talks about it, I'm like, there was no car. There was no mountain. There was no backyard. No there was no snow anywhere. There was nothing. There was no Tom Girardi to begin with. <laughs> she hired Mr. Magoo. Like, uh, I just don't know what to believe anymore. All right. So Erica said allegedly because she was getting in trouble with her lawyers. At least we got a little bit of that. We got that a little, little bit of that. Yeah. Um, Andy brings it back to the victims, and Erica responds that the best way. That, she, that I, yeah. Yeah, that was the way that I said about earlier. how she needs to uh, follow along in court. And, and then cooperate. Andy finally lets up, make sure that all the women have had their chance to ask all their questions. And um, before we finish, Kathy has to apologize to Garcelle. That bitch. Yeah, I yeah. never liked her. <laughs> For not coming up. I wonder if Kathy, when she said, Kathy, I never liked that bitch. Well, I think Kathy also is very, um, she would always give an RSVP. I think she's that type of person. True. And she thinks it's rude if you okay. don't RSVP to a dinner or stuff. So them not relaying the message that she couldn't make it for whatever reasons, that's what she was upset about. And oh, she wanted to apologize for, for that bad etiquette. I wonder if there was um, like some unair footage of when Kathy actually got to bring out her receipts. You know, she brought receipts. She did. I don't I don't see I, I didn't I, see any receipts the whole time. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a part five oh God. things you never saw. <laughs> well, final thoughts. What would Sutton do differently from this year? She would uh listen to Crystal and have a better conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, Dorit is owning her chatterbox status, but she, most importantly, wants to be a good mom and a good wife. Yes. And which I believe she is. Oh, yeah, it I think she's great. Those kids is. love her. 
Um, Kathy was really surprised at how real everything is and what a sisterhood she feels that she's part of. Yeah. Crystal loved being a part of the experience, yeah, um, <laughs> pretty much. It was a rough transition for her, but she kept an open mind and heart, and she's thankful for how it ended. Garcelle feels more like an insider now. Good for her. Yeah. She got the resolution with Dorit and she Rena. She that. Rena's leaving with resolution with Garcelle. Um, she learned about herself that she's, she's a, a good, good friend. friend. Yeah, she's <laughs> good for you, Rena. I'm a good friend. Good for you. I'm glad that you figured that out. <laughs> Um, Erica showed up, honored her commitment, and was, you really, she was as open as she could be. She really was, but she, really she was, was just very honorary about it. She went about it just very roughly. Like, oh, I, sh you showed up, I showed up. And it's like, oh, we get it, honey. We're, we're, this is a different, t this is some person, another yeah. person we're Thank talking you. about. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kyle feels a responsibility to mend relationships, and she's glad that she got to film with her sister. Mm -hmm. And then we finish off with Kathy's butlers, Patrick and Carlos. All right, I love that. I liked um, Patrick's little rainbow bow tie. Yes, yeah, I know, cute. right? So this is a wrap up. You know, even though we've kind of started our fourth season, this is our finale to our season three. Yes. Uh, which was our Beverly Hills recap. So again, what a really epic season that we really had the honor to share with the people who are listening. Yeah, it was a good season. Well, thanks you all so much. Um, in the meantime, you know the drill. Follow us on our socials. We, you can see us on Instagram and Facebook at The Real House Bears. On Twitter, we are Real House Bears. And you can email us at therealhousebears at gmail.com. And guess what? The threatening worked <laughs> on our last episode of Salt Lake City because we have two, you guys, Woo! two new reviews. Yeah. Um, yeah. Angela M underscore 82. Angela M underscore The Real House Bears. I love that. I love her. Oh, thank, thank you, you Angela, Angela M underscore 82. Oh, good year. And then Johnny Mac 73012. Johnny Mac. He just writes, I agree. <laughs> As the head title. I love it. He agrees love with the us. Love the show. I share the love for our own. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. I know you. Love, Hunter's the best. He's the most amazing person on the show. Like, oh my says. god! It's like Hunter's like the best and famous. And like he's so anyway. Much I wish I could have married him. Like, I mean, it's just <sighs> family. It just keeps going on and on and on. Well, anyways, right. thank you guys both. We're both gonna bring you guys up on the Salt Lake City episode. Yes, as well. Just in case you don't because listen to the Beverly's. because the threatening happened on the Salt Lake City episode. Right. So. I'm going to give you guys a little reprieve and say thank you. And if you guys are listening to us on anywhere you listen to podcasts, you could rate us, give us a five star, especially on Apple. We would really, really love a good review and a little five star rating. And you can also find us on YouTube. Thank you all so much. <laughs> if you're not watching Salt Lake City, get into it. You're missing out. Oh, my goodness. We'll be back next week. And guess what? Next week's your birthday. Yes, my birthday, November 12th. November 12th. We'll post our PayPals up on the Instagram. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it's not Halloween anymore. I wish it was. Testing, test, no, test, it's test. It's my birthday. It's your bear's birthday month. It's my birthday. What a great thing to test with. That's such a good tester right there. That's a it good sure test. Tests my patience. Oh.